So what can you expect when adjusting to the zero carb carnivore diet? And I guess I can give my anecdotal experiences first. So when I started this diet, it actually took me the better part of a year to get used to this in regards to my energy levels because I was not initially consuming enough fat. And I also, I could not really digest rendered fat too well. I don't know if it was just a matter of my stomach adjusting to it or, you know, but what I eventually did was I switched from consuming a lot more lean meat and some rendered fat to, just, I, I started buying like the kidney fat, the suet, and just heating it up a little bit on the outside itself and, and consuming almost like everything cooked blue to lighter cooked. And that was something that helped my stomach adjust and that was the point where I actually had uh, you know the energy levels that I have today on this diet it, and it really did take me about eight to nine months to adapt because I don't think I was consuming enough fat and the right foods now uh, keep in mind all of that time I always consumed liver nutrient dense foods and things like that but for the most part if you're on this diet and you don't have energy levels after a period of time you have to either look at the source of food you're using or perhaps alter the cooking method. So in the case of consuming, like I don't have personal experience with consuming high omega-6 foods like corn-fed chicken, um, maybe some conventional pork. I don't really have experience with those foods, but what I do have experience with is consuming rendered fat and how like anything like lard, tallow that's been heated at a high temperature for a period of time I just don't digest it. So there's definitely those aspects that tie into your energy levels as well as digestion and bowel movements. And bowel movements are a very big topic to discuss in regards to the carnivore diet because it's something most people notice and there seems to be two extreme ends of the spectrum. And I guess you don't really hear about the people that are doing well, right? Because you, you only hear people complaining that they're getting diarrhea or that they're constipated. And this also depends on what foods you're eating. So it's more of like a troubleshooting thing. And in the case of constipation, it tends to be, one thing we need to understand is meat digests at a much slower rate because it is very nutrient dense. So for meat to go in and out of your body, it takes someone from three to six days depending on the volume of food they're eating. Obviously, if someone's stuffing their face with four to five pounds of meat a day, it's going to go through faster than, and if someone was only eating like half a pound of meat a day, that might take even longer for that meat to go through their digestive system because a lot of the nutrients are absorbed in the small intestine and it, it, your body literally tries to utilize every percentage of meat that it can. And that's why when you're on this diet or like a keto diet, you notice that your bowel movements are much smaller and if anyone has ever done a raw meat diet or starts cooking their meat less they'll notice that their bowel movements become even smaller so with that in mind when you start this diet you have to keep give it like a buffer and and we're just talking about really the initial week now and if it takes more than I guess seven to ten days for you to have a bowel movement then you gotta start analyzing the foods you're eating uh, maybe are you hydrated enough Dehydration can be a big factor in bowel movements. Are you consuming dairy or certain foods that might have a mineral imbalance because dairy tends to be high in calcium. It can constipate you if you don't have enough magnesium or potassium. I noticed when I was traveling, I tried some cheese and I got a stomach ache and was constipated, but thankfully I had a magnesium supplement with me and that uh, fixed everything. So there's definitely some food considerations especially around dairy, specifically cheese. And, and in the other, you know, the electrolyte thing, that, that's difficult to speculate on because hydration should generally fix that. Uh, if we go into the diarrhea thing and stomach adjusting to foods, one thing you have to keep in mind is that regardless of what food you're eating, even if, it, even if it's ribeye and you've been eating ribeye for two years, if it's from a new source, your stomach might have to adjust to it. So. If you eat a steak and you switch your source and you get diarrhea because of that, then you know maybe the first day take a bite or two, the next day take a couple more bites, and then your stomach should be good to go. If by any means you're eating a certain food and your stomach hasn't adjusted to it within three to four days, then you have to say, okay, maybe this is not a good source of food, maybe I should cook it differently, or possibly you have some sort of intolerance to it or allergy to it, or maybe 
you have some prior damage from other diets to your stomach that is causing you not to be able to digest it. But for the most part, it, if, I mean, for me, like if I buy duck or chicken that's high in omega-6, even if I cook the meat and don't eat too much rendered fat, I just don't digest it too well. And it, it's something that unless you're eating it a couple times a week, I mean, at least one time a week, you have to keep in mind, unless your stomach is adjusted to that specific food, in the context of carnivore diet, you're probably going to get diarrhea the first time you eat it. So whenever you're switching to a new food source, try to keep that adjustment period in mind. And as I said, by any means, if it takes more than a couple days to adjust to a food, then you can critique those things I just talked about. Uh, allergies are something worth mentioning. I have consulted with a few people who have had stomach pain and it really boils down to just eliminating uh, the foods and seeing what's causing the problem. Uh, you know, in regards to allergies, low-level inflammatory reactions can be a little hard to pinpoint for some people. Uh, I guess, I mean, we could touch on dairy allergies, histamine intolerance, but that wouldn't really be the focus of this video. And the best way to really adjust to this diet is to just eat you know, kind of like rare to medium rare cooked super fatty beef and water and that's it. If you do that, when you incorporate other foods, when you do other things, then you don't have to worry about the sourcing. And in the case of, you know, consuming ground beef, although it's practical for most people and affordable for most people, it's it, it can be, you know, sometimes they put things in the ground meat that, and sometimes there's cross-contamination. You don't necessarily know what, what the grind is. There's those factors you're dealing with. And, and same thing with like eggs, cheese, you know, it's, it's one thing if you're buying high quality pastured eggs or raw cheeses made from high quality uh, grass fed milk, but that's not what most people are doing. Uh, so the safe, and you know, when I was adjusting to this diet, I actually bought some pastured pork, some pastured chicken. So it's not like you should necessarily avoid pork or chicken or you should, what you're trying to avoid is conventional store bought stuff and even free range chicken from the store or free range pork, Berkshire pork from the store is not truly pastured pork. And the problem is pastured pork and pastured chicken tend to be way more expensive than grass fed beef is. That's at least something I've noticed. And I guess something else worth mentioning is lamb is an excellent source uh, for adjusting to this diet. It tends to be fatty. It tends to have better omega ratios than the other meats. So in regards to becoming healthier overall, I think supplementing D3 is something that should be done it's definitely worth looking into either taking like a cod liver oil supplement or consuming a little bit of liver here and there to make sure you get your balanced nutrient profile. Uh, that's a little outside of the focus of this video, but I guess we're lumping up everything together that you might need to think of when adjusting to a carnivore diet. The sal salt is really just up to you. I mean, yeah, there's a whole electrolyte discussion that can be had and same thing about what type of water you should be drinking. but. Uh, you know, this was mainly to just troubleshoot any problems you might be having with your energy levels, digestion, and things like that. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know what other videos you guys would like to see. And don't like, like I had 50 people ask me to make a video on coffee and then about 100 people on that coffee video were like, Frank, I hate you now. So guys, I don't, I don't know what to tell you, but I'm going to do, people have been asking, I know a lot for a food sourcing video. Let me know if you guys would like to see that. Also, just any other topics off the top of your head that you think need to be. I know another big one is how to gain weight on this diet, so I will be doing those soon. If you guys would like to support me, please check out uh, the options. And because of the support we've gotten on Patreon, I will be doing either a, maybe we'll do like a zero carb on the go video, we'll go to a supermarket and buy some food, or uh, I don't know, let me, get, let me know what you guys would like me to do with uh, something in regards to zero carb that would cost money to do.